from another delay pushing the release to 2024, to Vin Diesel himself being one of the biggest fans of the game. Here are some major secrets about Arc 2, starting with, you guessed it, more delays. Most of the news about the game has been incredible and is definitely a huge step up from the first part. But one thing that keeps on disappointing everyone out there has to be its release date. The game was first announced back in 2020, but due to restraints because of the ongoing pandemic, it was set for a release sometime in 2022. But guess what? The game still wasn't ready by that time, with no updates on the progress of the game for about two whole years. Everyone just thought that the whole thing was canceled for some reason, and of course the fans were devastated. But then came the good news, or well, moderately good news. The studio made an official announcement, explaining the reason behind yet another delay, saying that they've basically run into a ton of issues while working with Unreal Engine 5 for the first time. For those of you who don't know, it's the first time the studio is making something this big, so working with an engine so complex and still trying to bring out the best of it has its own problems to overcome. It's pretty understandable as to why they're taking their time. No one wants a half-baked game, right? Especially after such a long wait, unlike a certain game with Cyber and Punk in the name. Enough about that. When's Arc 2 really coming out? Because of this delay, you're obviously not going to be seeing it come out anytime in 2023. But according to the studio, 2024 might just be the year. Though realistically, if they're having trouble with releasing it in 2023, I don't think we can count on an early 2024 release. So the most realistic guess that anyone could make would either be sometime in the middle of 2024 or even near the end of the same year. Sadly, the team hasn't officially confirmed an exact date yet, so you're just going to have to wait to experience how incredible the game is going to be. And by the looks of the E3 2022 trailer, I have some pretty high expectations, especially when you add Vin Diesel to the mix. There is no one out there who could have guessed that the Fast and Furious star would be one of the biggest fans of the original game, so much so that he spent over a thousand hours playing it. So naturally, it came as no surprise when he wanted to be the main character in the sequel. Now who in their right mind would say no to that? Not just that, but Vin Diesel is also acting as the president of Creative Convergence at the studio, which means that he's really going to do justice to the legacy of the first game, adding an actual player's perspective about what needs to be improved with the sequel, and then move on to bring about a much better product. But I know what you're wondering. That still doesn't explain why he's in the game. Like I said, Vin's the main character in the upcoming game, who is essentially a clone of the character you played as in the original, something that the animated show based around the game aims to explain. More on the character, he's called Santiago da Costa. Pretty cool, right? But then again, it means that the game is going to be taking a much different approach this time around. Lights out. Instead of focusing on just the survival aspect of the first game, this time they're going to be adding in a lot of lore and using a lot of storytelling, something that the previous game really lacked. And honestly, it was kind of a letdown, because the world was absolutely incredible. So it's a good thing that this time around, the players can really delve deeper into it. As for the story of the game, it's supposed to take place after the events of the fifth expansion of the original game, on a completely different planet that no one knows anything about. In fact, you could go ahead and play that DLC to get a pretty good idea of what to expect from the story. The gist of it is that at the end of the expansion, the Genesis ship is broken into two huge pieces in a really epic moment, with one of them being stuck in space, and the other crashing headfirst into a planet made mostly out of gases. It's then that you get to see a clone of your character. Yep, the very same one that Vin Diesel's playing. He wakes up and is suddenly taken to another planet that looks like a prehistoric version of Earth, giving you a pretty huge hint about where the story could start. Something tells me that this as 
especially since the studio hasn't really put out any kind of details about what the plot could be. On the other hand, there's some news about the gameplay as well. There's a lot that's changing this time around, and the gameplay is arguably the biggest part of it, considering that the first game was more of an open sandbox, where you just built your own civilization or community. This time there's going to be much more in-depth combat, particularly taking it more towards a Souls-like direction, while still keeping the sandbox elements that made the first game so good. You get target locking, multiple combos, staggers, and even special combos that combined with primitive weaponry and an open world that you can parkour and climb your way through sounds incredible, right? But that's not all. You've also got a completely new environment, and while it may somewhat resemble your very own planet just in a primitive era, there's a lot more to it, including aliens and a whole new series of creatures to fight against and defend yourself, or to go on hunts for the rewards, not to mention the bunch of different events that are always going on in the world, providing you with more information about the story. And of course, along with more challenges come great rewards. Whether or not you want to interact with them completely depends on the player. If you just want to go ahead and build a house while the world is falling apart, you're more than welcome to do that. But wait, where can you actually play the game? Here's where some of you might be bummed out, especially if you're waiting for the game and have a PS5. The game is going to be a semi-exclusive release, meaning that people who own a PC or the latest Xbox are going to be able to get their hands on it before anyone else, especially if they have the Xbox Game Pass service. In fact, if there's early access for the sequel as well, then they could even get their hands on it before its official release. But thankfully, it isn't a completely exclusive release. So after a while, usually around half a year or so, players from the PlayStation side of the gaming space could potentially get their hands on it. Unfortunately, there still is no official news about how long that period of exclusivity is going to be, making the changes of it being a cross-platform release lower, but not impossible. But there's no denying that the first game was a huge success on the PS4, so the past could repeat itself pretty soon. And of course, with all of this, I have to talk about the graphics. I mean, it's pretty much expected from a sequel to look better than its predecessor, but ARK took it a step further and went ahead with choosing Unreal Engine 5 for the game, an engine that's so good and realistic that no one's ever able to tell the difference between games and real life anymore, at least not at first glance. So you can for sure expect the visuals in ARK 2 to completely blow your mind away and finally do justice to the world that they've created. And hey, there's no denying that the first game looked alright, but nowhere near good enough for the world it intended to create. I'm sure we can all agree on this. Anyway, that's been a look into some of the biggest secrets about ARK 2. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.